April 2024 will be the biggest and most important month this year, guys. Look at this. Everything is merged together here. All the planets are very close together. Uh, lots of new beginnings. Solar eclipse of the century is happening there. <laughs> Powerful solar eclipse, which means new beginning solar eclipse, which means there is earthquake in your soul at certain level because there are earthquakes as well on Earth. And this earthquake changes and gives you a new initiative, new direction in life, new identity areas. These are my longest horoscopes this year. I'm not going to do such long horoscopes, but this is such an important month. A new beginning, another new beginning. Saturn conjunct Mars, new cycle starts, which means you're going to have for the next two years, new tasks. The great work that you have to do, where you have to build perseverance, where you have to put a lot of your efforts, where is that going to be? And you might have a master finished work within two years, but big challenges there as well. And the biggest event of the year, Jupiter conjunct Uranus. <laughs> it will never happen again, Jupiter to conjunct Uranus in Taurus in your life. It will repeat in 84 years once in a lifetime opportunity. I can't tell you how excited I am. New cycle. Well, will your source of abundance and opportunities come to you over the next 14 years? If you catch this message, if you understand it, you can have an opportunity for the next 14 years to be abundant. So we'll speak about each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I want to tell you that this is my birthday month, April. If I'm still alive after April <laughs> with all the eclipses in the beginnings, I want to make you a gift. All my courses will be 30, 40%, sometimes even more off. I do this only once per year for two weeks. This is the time. All my courses, personal courses, if you want to learn astrology over a thousand hours, they're short courses, long courses, I'll put them. Uh, you can buy them now. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> uh, and we still have a few places for the retreat with me in Bulgaria at the end of May. Uh, we have three places, I think. So quickly write to me if you're interested. We'll organize everything quickly for you. Uh, this is the most personal retreat I ever do because I'll be looking at all of your horoscopes uh, individually. Well, it's very uh, private and it's very personal. It's a small group only. So thank you so much. Let's start. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Gemini. All the action is not happening in your sign exactly. The real action is coming to you from the end of May when Jupiter starts entering your sign. It's more like a preparatory stage. But you see, all the planets in April are above the horizon for you. So it's pretty busy areas. Well, when they're below the horizon, we go a bit more hibernate and do more private stuff. When it's above, you have kind of, uh, you know, more visibility, more kind of external activities, which kind of I think Gemini's would like. But let's start with the eclipse. The eclipse falls in your 11th house and it's happening while Mercury is retrograde. So for you, Mercury is the most important planet. Mercury goes retrograde from April the 1st or so around the last, the end of March, the beginning of April for a few days. And you use Mercury goes retrograde three, four times per year. But there might be some shifts and changes that ha starts happening on, in you. Change of perspective, how you think about yourself, about something in your life, especially around this 11th house, about your goals and dreams and long-term projects, about friendships. You might start revising them, rethinking them. Maybe you might get in touch with people friends, acquaintances, colleagues, clients, even the 11th house, very social networking, whether it's on personal or business networking. So you might be either revising who you want as your clients or, or, or thinking, do I want to keep doing the same thing in regards to my social life? Or do I want to keep seeing the post from this person? Even on Facebook, I'm not interested, or on Instagram, don't want to follow this person, or don't want those people to follow me. These are your clients as well, or followers. There might be some rethinking there, or they might be, you know, and thinking like I have, I can do it differently, uh, or there might be you meeting people you haven't seen in a while, someone, you know, friends you haven't seen, you connect with them, people you haven't seen for a while, you reconnect with them, or. Uh, revising some of your long-term goals, you know, and maybe completing them, finishing them, putting some ending touches there. 
Um, so this is how Mercury retrograde can happen, but you might have plans, certain social plans, prepare for the unexpected when Mercury retrograde there, uh, unless you're meeting people you already know, Mercury retrograde, but certain plans when it comes to business and to connecting with others, uh, they might, you have to be more flexible and willing to accept that there might be different ways to do things rather than how you've planned it. And that can be frustrating if you're not flexible, but you're Gemini, you're flexible. But the big thing is that there is an eclipse on the 8th in your 8th house, uh, 11th house, Gemini. So this eclipse also brings a lot of new energy. While Mercury is rethinking some of your old friendships and how you do goals and completing something old or editing there, at the same time, this new moon eclipse says and it's an omen for the next one year it can start you can start feeling it even before a month before brand new circumstances in your social life it means as well and there there is an element first that you might be eliminating something there with mercury retrograde chiron is also part of the eclipse you maybe have some deep realization of the wounding the the wounded healer is chiron and of the wounding you have and because of which you're letting in not the right people in your life, but such kind of, there is a possibility that there is a healing for you in regards to your social persona. I don't know, at school you might have been bullied, you might not have been popular, you might not have had friends or something to do, think back to how was your social environment, is there some wounding there? And there can be a breakthrough because of this eclipse for this. And new friends can enter your life they can start, maybe they have started already, but there is this newness of the eclipse. It's in Aries, new energy. It's a Rahu eclipse, North Node, something new, risky, it, unusual. You can get, you can open yourself about people that are very different and diverse than before. And they can be this energy of sudden breakthrough and or breakdown of friendships or breakthrough it cl in clients and business gains. 11th house would rules your gains if you have a business. It will rule, rule your salary and bonus if you work for someone. So there can be some big shift here. And Rahu tends to give us eclipses with the North Node Rahu tend to give us something. And it's not just on the 8th of April you can expect, oh, where is my bonus? Why don't I have a breakthrough with my income? It's a sign for the whole next year. So there can be some opportunity that appears or some something... And even friends that are very fated, that are part of your path, that appear, or acquaintances and contacts and business connections that appear, or you joining a group or some society or some network, it might be online, might be some club or whatever, that allows you to have a breakthrough towards your goals and dreams and wishes. This is the 11th house. There might be some benefactor with a strong masculine energy, <laughs> this Aries eclipse that appears, of alpha energy type, that appears as well to lead you, to guide you, to help you in some way. Or you can be very, you can suddenly have a breakthrough and become initiative to pursuing clients, uh, followers, 11th house can rule all of those things. Also the 11th house is degrees and titles and honors and uh, social recognitions, PhD, MBD, whatever, um, so diplomas and so on. There can be some powerful new beginning there for you, or breakthrough or development with such matters as well. And it is, uh, and it's, you know, this eclipse, I, I with the North Node, I would advise you, might be good to get active with groups, and of course, an eclipse can create some crisis there at the same time, but it, it brings new opportunities as well. And especially groups that can help you fulfill your material goals and dreams, because it's the Rahu Eclipse North Node, or your strong desires, basically. All right, this is the eclipse. What about the other two days after? There is a new cycle starting as well, which is a two-year cycle, Saturn-Mars cycle on the 10th of April, which shows where we have to be tough, no nonsense, and put put your back, put our backs into it for a couple of years in what area of life. And we'll be meeting challenges there. We'll be meeting some obstacles there. Uh, but Saturn and Mars cycles, they show us every two years they meet and they say, okay, 
We want this person to develop the virtues of Saturn and Mars. Courage, willpower, Mars. Uh, directness. Uh, Saturn is uh, being kind of strict with yourself, discipline, persevering, overcoming obstacles. Uh, and just and we are sorry. Where you will be learning to have this perseverance, courage, strength, self-discipline from April, it's connected to your career, to your responsibilities to the world. You have to have a no-nonsense attitude there. You can do some incredible work. Saturn Mars is the combination of marathon runners, of Iron Man, uh, big achievers, uh, but you have to use those virtues of Saturn and Mars if you want to have the breakthrough there. Over the next two years, you can achieve something big connected with that area of your life, career, uh, social status, uh, but it can start with certain obstacles. Sometimes they can be some challenge, especially around the 10th, connected to frustration with authorities, institutions, bosses, people in power, uh, or it might be like a trigger for your own activation, for your own inner authority to be more serious, to be more disciplined, to work on some long-term project, to work on something with without distractions, uh, to really mobilize your energies there. But again, as I said, there can be certain frustrations, especially coming from authority figures, government institutions, and so on. But if you, as I said, if you use the higher principles in Saturn and Mars, uh, or even with father figures, there can be some issues. If you use those higher principles, you can achieve a lot. And you can start like a new project, a new direction in your career, for example that asks you to, to be more responsible, that asks you to put in more time, more willpower, and so on. Uh, and you can transform and change your social status. And then the last important event this month, Gemini, is the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus in your 12th house. It happens once every 13 or 14 years only. And it's a combination of powerful breakthroughs. It's a new beginning. And this new beginning comes to you from the 12th house. Uh, and it's almost like it's, it's both planets are illumination and knowledge. Higher knowledge of Jupiter, the angelic wisdom, and the divine wisdom of Uranus, which uh, works on very high levels. And you can have breakthroughs connected to your subconscious there, the 12th house is where we keep our traumas from past lifetimes, where we have our self-sabotaging behaviors, where the subconscious dominates us. We want to do something consciously, but we keep self-sabotaging ourselves uh, about it. And Jupiter Uranus gives this brilliant, such rare opportunity to realize consciously why you self-sabotaging to eliminate as well and to be free. Jupiter and Uranus, a combination of absolute beautiful freedom like a dispensation from your higher self you realize something and it breaks you from the chains of certain self-constriction it is it might be the breaking of chains of me mental chains where you're limiting yourself because this 12th house is very much connected to mental health in some way the breaking of chains and freedom from some self-sabotaging behaviors and addictions as well time-wasting behaviors and it's a sudden clean cut and you no longer feel like going back to the past so such kind of disruptive self-sabotaging behaviors you can you can this time eliminate them it's happening in a constellation called critica which the sign is uh, the symbol for it is a knife cutting something out with a knife sudden clean cut and you have the knowledge jupiter which allows you not to be anymore into the net of an illusion. Certain illusion will be burst for you. Certain self-deception can also be, you can become clear about it. And 12th house can be others that uh, may be draining your energy or that are de deceptive. Certain secrets that suddenly come to the surface and it's illuminated with wisdom and, and understanding or maybe someone was doing something behind your back and you realize it and you release that. And, and 
so it's it's a long it's it's a it's a very powerful and quick influence sorry but 12th house is also your subconscious sudden realization sudden glimpses of past lifetimes or forgotten memories as well sudden downloads messages from the invisible world the very psychic house with the most telepathic planet uranus and the jupiter clear connection to the invisible world to your uh, guides to your ancestors that have passed and uh, you can have dreams that are prophetic jupiter uranus is the combination for the future predicting the future seeing the future you can have a reading with a psychic or 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 someone that kind of hits you right here and it cuts to the core and you understand what it is suddenly and you realize certain behaviors or you're given a sign and, and some message from the invisible worlds as well. Also, it can indicate new opportunities that come to you that will unfold over the next 14 years. Those new opportunities can come to you through foreign places, people that are far away from you uh, in uh, faraway places. Or, it can, uh, or you can, you know, because 12 houses, foreign countries, so maybe there can be an opportunity for you to live in a foreign country, to relocate, for example. Or for some of you, there can be an opportunity for investment, because it's in Taurus, it's financial sign, for investment in a faraway country or investment in something that is 12 house oriented. Or, uh, and that over the next 12 years, can 14 years, can bring gains, but it might be connected to arts, to healing, 12 house activities, something spiritual, arts, healing, uh, research of some sort as well. And it's giving you the green light and it's saying that it will be source of growth and abundance. Um, as I said, spiritual downloads, realizations, um, dreams that you know, give you answers. Mm, what else can the 12th house be? Yes, spiritual, they can be even spiritual awakenings <laughs> for some of you. 12th house is the house of the subconscious. Jupiter and Uranus are both awakeners of some sort. You can start on a path of spiritual exploration or traveling of some sort or research. 12th house is very much connected to research, deep studies, uh, especially studies that are more philosophical, more spiritual of some sort as well. So let's see what comes through that. As if anything of this rings for you true, you can write comments over the next uh, month or after the next month to see if anything there is shaping up. So thank you so much, Gemini.